Hi Kelly, welcome Hi, to the podcast number two. How does it feel? It feels great. I feel really, actually, genuinely happy that I'm over here, and thank you for inviting me. The pleasure is all mine. And how's your Wednesday going? It's ten thirty in the morning. Pretty hot, actually. It's really yeah. hot out there. I know, I know. I yeah. think in the past two days it's been raining. Yeah. And. and uh, the weather is pretty the humidity up. is awful <laughs> it's like my hair is going off frizzy, frizzy yeah. so so kelly tell us something about yourself and how did you land in new york um so hi i'm kelly um and i'm a master student over here at lubin school of business my major is ms in accounting data analytics and I'm also pursuing US CPA at the moment like because it's going it's summer break so I'm like okay there's nothing to study so might as well pursue this and get it over with That's too much to study I think CPA It is yeah. I mean um so I'll tell you something about my mm-hmm. background mm-hmm. I am I also did CA when okay. I was in India uh, okay. I didn't finish it I dropped out of it like after a few years 2 3 years maybe mm-hmm. but after studying that I felt like CPA would be much easier but I was so wrong Okay. It's definitely is it on the harder. same lines or is the it syllabus is. it is like it's basically CA of the United States of America. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. So okay. it is on the same level, but mm-hmm. the only difference is that there are lesser subjects and you get more leniency about when you want to give the exam. Right. But it's still not that easy okay. as I thought it would be. Yeah. But yeah, it's been fun and yeah. I'm doing an internship right now, a summer internship. Oh wow! So yeah, it's been pretty good. Awesome. and like is the percentage of uh, you passing cpa is more than that of ca like in india um, back in india i know <coughs> some of my friends are also chartered accountants so they yeah. say that you know in the final exam you have only like 1 or 2% students pass yeah that's yeah. true like yeah. the percentage is so less yeah. but no that's not the case with your cpa it's okay. much more than that okay. the passing rate is uh, depends on the subjects mm-hmm. but usually it's around 40 to 45% which okay. is a great number. Oh, compared wow. to CA. 40 yeah. to 45% is like Yeah, you because you count that subject mm. wise and in mm-hmm. India you can't give just one subject at a time. Right. You okay. have to give the entire yeah, like two the, groups. Yeah, two yeah, groups. Yeah, two groups. It's right. and to one group has like four subjects or five right, subjects in right, it. So Right, right, right. Yeah, oh, the percentage is much lower. Good luck <coughs> with your uh, CPA exams. Thank you. <laughs> You're just preparing or so when do you plan to like give the exam? I wanted to give it mm-hmm. next week like I was planning on giving it on 10th of July or around 10th of July mm-hmm. but I don't think I'll be able to do that but I okay. definitely will be giving one subject at least mm-hmm. by the time the semester starts before oh, the wow. semester starts interesting good luck with that thank you <laughs> and uh, so tell me about your journey from uh, India to the United States how what was the first step how did you even think of coming to new york or the united states to pursue your <laughs> masters so i had actually no plans mm-hmm. before 2021 december and or november i think i was initially planning for europe and i was planning on going there on a work visa but i had recently started studying like just in, like back in india i had started studying for us cpa in india itself So I thought it would be much better if I mm-hmm. were to go to the country for yeah. which license I'm studying for. So mm-hmm. and I was also working full time at the time. Okay. And I was also in my last semester of law, law school. Oh. And <laughs> so you studied chartered <coughs> accountancy, you studied law, you are studying masters now. So Yeah, it's <laughs> a whole mix uh, of professions. So I'll tell you about it mm-hmm. in detail. So yeah. after 12th, mm-hmm. after high school, I did bachelor's in commerce which is yeah. basically accounting and finance yeah. i did 3 years of that and along with that i was also pursuing ca which is mm. cpa of india yeah i think a lot of students yeah. do ca with bcom CA while they're in they combine yeah, that yeah. yeah yeah and after my bcom was done i i didn't want to do my masters mm-hmm. i was actually more inclined towards law because okay. um during my internship mm-hmm. uh, in my first degree I had been given a lot of law related work like legal documents and everything and it got me interested. Okay. And so I was like I'm not going to do my masters. Yeah. I'll just start pursuing law. So I did wow. my LLB and I completed that last year. Okay. I couldn't get my license because by the time I could apply for mm. my license and give the bar exam, I had to come here. So oh. I'm still considered a lawyer. But you can though. still do that, right? 
or no? Yeah, I can still do that. Okay. Yeah. I'm not considered an advocate. I can't go in the court and fight a case. Yeah. But represent a client, but mm-hmm. I can still work in law firms and be called a lawyer. Can you work in law firms here in the United States? No, I can't. No. no, it's only in India. Yeah. Oh, nice. I would have to go through the law school again. Ah, I'm not doing and that. And give that exam, you as you mentioned. Yeah. Nice. LSATs, I think. Okay. Yeah. So after that, um, while I was doing my law, I mm-hmm. also, I started my U.S. CPA journey. During okay. that, okay. I had it's a it's a very like you know mm. a bunch of mixed mm. professions like I said, and while doing that, I decided that you know U.S. CPA is something I want to do. Okay. And to do that, I wanted to learn the basics mm-hmm. of U.S. accounting because I can't just jump right into the yeah. you know, most difficult exam of the profession. Right. So I did a postgrad in mm-hmm. U.S. accounting. It was okay. a one-year course, and I finished that before coming here. Mm-hmm. And when I was applying to universities over here, I knew that there's just one course that I want to do. Okay. It's accounting. Mm-hmm. But I also knew that accounting is not STEM. So and I wanted STEM. Okay. So I did my research and I found out that a few universities do offer accounting with STEM. Um, and these courses are usually for students who want to pursue US CPA. So Wow. Yeah. So um, students go for that course if they want to um, study CPA course as so well along with the si- uh, yeah. yeah. Side so uh, no, so, so even with for the degree, mm-hmm. they do teach you the CPA review course. Okay. At least two subjects, over oh, okay. here also at base also. Okay. Oh wow. So I knew that I wanted to do C- US mm. CPA, and I also wa- knew I wanted to do accounting. Yeah. I knew I wanted STEM. Mm-hmm. So I did my research, and I found quite a few universities in the US that were, you know, mm-hmm. um, had you that had these courses. Okay. So I applied to like four universities mm-hmm. and. See, I, I was confused between Seattle University and Pace. Okay. But then it's New York, so. Yeah, of course. It's <laughs> Who New doesn't want to come to New York? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's how I decided on New York and Pace University. Pace University. Awesome. So, it's been a year or less than a year? Almost, Almost a year. Almost I a came year. here in um, September. August. August, yeah. Last week of August. Yeah, I think yeah. We, we both came in together. I think so, yeah. 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 And uh, it's almost a year. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it, it feels <laughs> doesn't like. Doesn't feel like that. Yeah, though. it doesn't feel like that. And as in when we are, you know, progressing with our courses, it feels like, oh, it's just one year left yeah, for exactly. our graduation. It's insane. Yeah. And I feel more happy being here because I all, despite all of these mm. degrees and despite studying for all of these years, yeah. um, I've never had a college life. Like okay. an actual college life, going to classes every day, mm-hmm. meeting friends, hanging out with friends, sometimes yeah. bunking classes. Yeah. I've never done that. So because I was always like doing two things together. So mm-hmm. I couldn't focus on college. I used to g- go yeah. to college like to give exams and everything. Mm-hmm. But I couldn't enjoy the actual college life. Yeah. So I feel really happy being here mm-hmm. because I'm able to do that now. And I'm just saying yes to everything. Except when I'm feeling lazy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. yeah. No, it's that's that's good actually you have to get involved in all the activities exactly. that you know the university has to offer even attend classes even do the assignments projects yeah. everything yeah. you have a lot of things on one plate true and i think the master's program teach you like how to you know maneuver around a lot of things that you have true. on your plate yeah. well, actually that's a good thing and uh, so why this course particularly as you mentioned and uh, <coughs> also you said that you have an internship. Yeah. You know, you have I an did. internship coming up. Yeah. So, um, so tell me something about it. I have an internship. I'll be working at the trading floor of New York Stock Exchange. And um, I'm I'm so, like, honored. And mm-hmm. I'm still in awe of the fact that, oh, my God, I managed to bag an internship at the New York Stock Exchange. Mm-hmm. And not just at any... Um, like offices or mm. even in any form at the Wall Street, but the main thing. Yeah. So I'm very excited for that. Um, the employers did give me a tour mm-hmm. of the floor before oh, wow. I could start. They wanted to, you know, make me feel welcomed and make me mm. feel comfortable enough to be on the floor. So last week they took me on the floor and I saw the all the workings over there. I mm-hmm. saw where I'll be working yeah. and uh, I saw the place where all the news channels, C- CNBC, Bloomberg, and every, everyone okay. do their reporting and everything. So it's been, it was yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, I saw cool. a few yeah. stories and pictures that you had 
yeah. post it <laughs> <laughs> awesome it's so cool i mean okay. it's just amazing awesome so just tell me about the process of uh, how did you manage to get an internship especially in nyc and what was your process that you followed to okay. get an internship how like when did you start applying for internships i started in last year december okay i started way early and mm-hmm. i didn't use any other apps or websites or anything except handshake okay handshake has been my holy grail so wow. um that is what i would advise everyone that mm mm-hmm. keep Use applying handshake. yeah okay. keep applying because for this nyse internship as well mm-hmm. i applied in february and i got a reply right now in june in may actually in may. but yeah okay feb okay so almost after 2 months yeah 2 months. months oh okay so you have to keep applying and even if you don't get an answer it's okay i mean mm, yeah. i think i must have applied to around 200 internships and jobs mm. and everything yeah but it's it's okay you do mm. get discouraged when you don't hear back which I is know. i mean employers tend to do that sometimes mm. they ghost you yeah. which is not nice but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um yeah i would go to handshake first mm-hmm. that's get your resume fixed that's what okay. i did okay. i first of all get got my resume fixed uh, with the help of career services okay. career services i cannot thank them enough mm-hmm. amazing team yeah and so I did my resume and I think I scored you, you know they have that yeah, resume have score, score and yeah. I don't remember the exact yeah. term yeah. but I got something around 96% okay. which is I have a 100 by the way Oh my god <laughs> <laughs> I need to beat that Yeah <laughs> So yeah. okay fine Yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah even I changed my resume like Yeah, you have to keep times. changing and it. And you need to have those specific keywords and exactly. the, and the flow that they mention like you first need to have your name, your yeah. contact details, then relevant course LinkedIn, work. Yeah. Um URL. In, yeah, URL. Yeah, and then your work ex and then hobbies or I don't yeah. think so hobbies is a big uh, I did put hobbies. Game changer. Though. Okay. It is. Is it? Is? It it is. Okay. I'll get ba- I mean I'll get back on that in mm-hmm. one of my interviews. Yeah. I did mention my one of my hobbies. Mm-hmm. It's not hobby exactly, yeah. it's one of my interests mm-hmm. or passions or I don't know what what to call yeah. it exactly, but something I really enjoy. Mm-hmm. And I did talk a lot about it and the, the employer the interviewer really loved that. I like okay. that about US. Mm-hmm. The thing about the uh thing about India and US mm-hmm. the difference between that is in India they just focus on technical aspects and how much you have memorized right in us what i have observed in all the interview processes it's not like that mm-hmm. they tend to go more towards your behavioral aspects yeah. which is how it should be mm. i mean i'm a yeah. fresher so they have a they have different rounds of interviews first yeah. is like the you know just to know you a little better they have like a telephonic call yeah. or next is you know then there are set of exactly. interviews mm. behavioral questions and technical questions if any True. So tell me something about the internship uh, process. Like how was the process? How did how did NYC reach out to you and what was what were the set of rounds that you had to go through? Um I think I got pretty lucky with that because mm-hmm. I didn't have to go through that many rounds. It was okay. just one interview. Okay. And uh I received a call I think in last week of May. Mm-hmm. I had applied to this internship in February. Okay. I had completely forgotten about it. Mm-hmm. So when they gave me a call at like yeah. 10 in the morning, I was like, "Okay, hi. Yeah, this is Kelly." Mm-hmm. And they're like, "Hi, can you you applied for this position? Can you come in at 10 tomorrow?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure." So, I I, I had absolutely no you idea. You were not prepared for it? Or? No, the thing is I didn't know who was calling, yeah. what <laughs> firm was calling. Yeah. I didn't even ask because I don't know what was going through my mind, mm-hmm. but I forgot to ask. Yeah. Okay. So they gave ju- they just gave me the address. address. I okay. noted down the address. Yeah. I went there to m- mm. the next day. And you know they have the concierge and everyone everything. Yeah. 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 Uh when it comes to like huge buildings. So I asked him I told him I have an appointment at this floor and mm. he's like who are you meeting? Mm. Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he's like what's the name of the company? I'm like I don't know. <laughs> Which is so bad. Yeah. I mean I felt like oh my god I'm not going to get yeah. this. Yeah. Because he made me call the person Okay. And the person uh, th- I had I didn't know who I was meeting, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I had saved his number 
as the address oh of the form which okay. is so insane yeah so when i called uh, the guy to you know t- mm. tell him to like to tell the concierge that right hey i'm here let him know that mm. he should mm. let me up okay so yeah but they did let mm. me up mm. and then i told him that i'm sorry i d- I, i couldn't get your name yeah. yesterday on call but yeah it all worked out they asked me a few questions about it like mm. how do you think finance will be mm. you know beneficial in this internship and it was just like your normal interview just mostly normal. behavioral yeah. questions okay. and they told me that this is our requirement and can you start i'm like yeah, yeah. of course so i got everything sorted with career mm-hmm. services i applied okay. for my uh, cpt form the mm-hmm. cpt employment verification form i got that approved there were a few glitches but it happened yeah and yeah i start friday awesome <laughs> this friday you start yeah awesome good luck with that Thank and you. Uh, yeah so you also have a full time opportunity which i am really interested and yeah. keen to know about <laughs> before even graduation i think one year before or one and a half year before one graduation one and a half year before graduation one and a half year before graduation you have a full time yeah. offer yeah tell me something <laughs> about that i am really so interested to know about even i am pretty shocked mm-hmm. um when i think about how i got it i mean i did not expect it to go like that so i applied with uh, i applied to deloitte i think um in feb before that i had been to, to the deloitte offices just once because okay. there was this networking event organized by the career services mm-hmm. for just the pay students oh wow i think it was i even remember the date F- mm. first feb i think yeah first feb okay okay so i i went to the offices i saw the office and i was like mm. oh my god this is so beautiful like yeah the view from the office mm-hmm. so the uh, office is at 30 rock Okay. Rockefeller Center. Rockefeller Center. Yeah. Yeah. And the view from the office is beautiful. It's like mm-hmm. something out of a, you know, computer wallpapers. Yeah. 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 So it was something like that. And after like I think 10 12 days, mm-hmm. there was another um networking event at Pleasantville campus. Yes. Yes. So I went there and I had like 15 20 minutes before the event was supposed mm-hmm. to start. So I was sitting at the library in the library at the Pleasantville campus. Okay. and i saw this job posting and i was like mm-hmm. okay let me apply i might yeah, get it might yeah. not get it a reply not the job offer yeah, i yeah. might get a reply <laughs> might not get a reply yeah. so i applied to the job and mm. after the networking event was over like after an hour yeah i headed back to new york i was heading back to new york on the bus and i got an email that hi we just received your offer and we want to interview okay you and we would like to set up an interview call mm-hmm. next week Okay. It's like, oh, that's amazing. Wow. I even remember the date. It's 15 fift- yeah. it was 15th Feb I applied. Mm-hmm. 22nd Feb was um the interview. Mm-hmm. There were two rounds of interview, one okay. with the senior audit manager and another one was with I think a vice president. Mhm. And it was all ag- again, it was all behavioral questions, okay. I think technical, but the It was just the, uh, the senior audit manager just mm-hmm. asked me behavioral questions yeah. and the vice president asked me just about myself not even mm. behavioral just questions not technical how, yeah how and you would be the right fit yeah, for exactly. the particular company yeah. yeah and i remember i was just going on and on and on about yeah. how i love traveling okay okay so that is what i mentioned so he liked that fact about you yeah okay. i so what i did was i mentioned in my resume mm-hmm. that i solo travel okay yeah in fact i had been on like two trips that's it yeah yeah so, so it's not technically a hobby or yeah, anything yeah but you can like speak about it i had started i had just started yeah. yeah so i talked to him about that mm-hmm. and i was talking to him about my next trip that was to new orleans yeah and i told him about um how you know i have budgeted everything i'm mm-hmm. going to be there for like 4 days mm-hmm. and i'm i the only budget i have is like a 450 dollars okay Ex- including accommodation travel yeah, like travel, flights and food, uber yeah. food entertainment mm. everything and he was shocked he was like 450 dollars i couldn't last a day for that <laughs> i was like yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he loved that fact so i like i said mm-hmm. they really do care about your hobbies and yeah. interests so yeah so the interview went great yeah. i didn't know how it went because i have been really bad at interviews okay and that was my first ever interview in the US right right so 
and I I I lucked out. <laughs> yeah, and I think this is a lesson or maybe an example for all the master students yeah. in your course, especially in finance yes. course, to maybe start looking out for opportunities from day one. True. Maybe you never know what you know you can land in, and you know that can turn out like a dream opportunity yeah. for that <laughs> particular student. So. Kudos to you, man! Like Thank you. <laughs> superb, and uh, I think career services here played a huge a role huge for role. Uh, organizing yeah. these networking events. So, what exactly happened on that particular event, or did you like meet any HR professionals, yeah. or did you meet your managers that you would be working with, or something? Yeah, I didn't meet the uh, manager I I will be working with, but I did. meet a lot of recruiters okay uh, especially for audit and assurance because okay. that is what i was interested in okay and i the recruiter that i am in contact mm. with right now i met both of them over mm-hmm. there mm. i talked to them about the process yeah. and i told them that i want to apply okay and i think i might have missed the deadline for summer internships because i was okay. too late for that right right all the big fours and all the big organizations they start their process one year, one year or before. one and a half year before yeah, yeah that's true yeah so i had already missed the deadline for summer internships yeah. and i was like i graduate in like mm. you know a few months yeah. and i need <laughs> to find something i want to apply yeah so she was like you can apply for a full time offer directly I was like okay mm-hmm. and there were other um employees as well who were seniors mm-hmm. and when we were in tax consulting yeah. audit and assurance and they were talking about their day their how their you know normal work day goes right, like right. and what do they work mm. with and it was just very interesting to know about their process mm-hmm. so yeah after the event we were asked to like network with everyone yeah, yeah. with the fellow students that mm-hmm, were there mm-hmm. and i think that really helped because i feel like it's easier for me compared to other students it okay. might not be easier for them because i love talking yeah so <laughs> an extreme extrovert i am an extreme yeah. extrovert yeah. i just yeah. i enjoy talking so and i don't feel like very yeah uh, i don't know i can't even new yorkers love talking they will just stand next to you and just you know talk about hey how's the weather <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah even i love that fact about New York. Yeah. So yeah, so that's how you landed your full-time opportunity with yeah. uh, Deloitte. Yes. It's a dream company for uh, you accounting, know accounting and finance. And finance. Yeah. So how has your time been at Pace University and tell us something about your first day at Pace University? My first day at Pace was a little weird. I mm-hmm. mean, I was I don't know, I was in a different frame of mind i think okay. because i had just gotten here and i think i was missing home mm-hmm. i was not at all interested in you know just unlike other students i just yeah. wanted to stay at home and not go out anywhere mm-hmm. but when i stepped into the university i saw the the tabling hub yeah when i saw the downstairs courtyard and everything mm-hmm. i was like oh my god this is good yeah <laughs> i want to come here and study yeah. every day yeah so it was pretty good and my first class mm-hmm. was i think advanced audit and analytics with professor huang for which for and afterwards the next semester i worked for him as a teaching assistant as, as a graduate assistant wow. but my first class was amazing mm-hmm. i genuinely saw the difference of indian teaching methods and the teaching methods over mm-hmm. here and it was amazing awesome and also you mentioned that you had your on campus job at pace from the first semester itself no no from the second semester from the second semester yeah okay so tell us something about uh, your on campus opportunity that you got so from day 1 i knew that mm. i wanted um to work as a graduate assistant okay at the university mm-hmm. and i knew i needed to have a good connection with the professors right be in you know network with other, with mm-hmm. other professionals and maybe the head of the department and everyone yeah which is for accounting it's uh, professor charles tang okay so with that's what i did mm-hmm. from day 1 i started you know answering in classes and yeah. being very active in classes mm-hmm. when the semester was you know going on mm-hmm. and it was about to end i what i did was i got in touch with the department head Okay. Which is Professor Charles Tang. I got in touch with him, with him, and told him that 
you know, I want to work as a graduate assistant yeah. and what can I do to mm -hmm. improve my chances? And he told me that you need to have a 3.5 and above GPA. Yeah, yeah. And he said that you talk to your professors that you are studying with right now okay. and tell them that you are interested and you will be applying. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. Yeah. And I managed to, you know, get a position with Professor Huang. Okay. So that happened in your second semester. Yes. Okay. And are you still continuing your GA? Uh, so GA role? is only for the semester. Okay. You have to apply again if you want to continue mm -hmm. after the mm -hmm. semester. So it depends if the department gives the professor um, the funds and the position. Right. He will be considering a student. Otherwise, he oh. also has no option. So I have applied again. But we'll see what happens. Awesome. But I'm excited to see that. So you have an on-campus opportunity. You have an internship. You have a full-time yeah. offer. <laughs> I think you are making the most out of your uh, master's program and which is everyone should look up to your experience and your you know, expertise in how you are dealing with all the things that you have on your plate and that it's commendable, I would say. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel like there there might be people who must mm. have had different experiences. I feel like I have been pretty lucky so far. New York has been good to me. Yeah. It truly is the land of opportunity, like for mm. me at least. And I haven't faced that much difficulty mm -hmm. in career, I mean, okay. until now. Yeah. So I'm hoping it stays like oh, that. That's a good thing. You just keep working hard and, you know. Touch wood. Yeah, touch wood. <laughs> and uh, you'll sail through. Yes, I yeah. hope so. So what was, so when you, you came uh, in August last year, right? In yeah. 2022. So tell us something about your experience in uh, living in New York. Any challenges you faced or any cultural shocks that you faced in New York? Oh, the biggest one um, and the smallest one. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing I had was a coffee. Okay. And I realized that coffee in the US is actually a coffee. <laughs> like it's not a sweet, sweetened yeah. like mm. milk and like Bon Vita or something. Yeah. So in India, you don't get coffee like very strong or very mm. bitter. But mm. over here, it's actually coffee. Yeah. So that yeah. was one of the things. Other things. Uh, other thing was that um, public transportation. Okay. I love the connectivity, and I feel like if you're in Manhattan, everything is nearby. Right. right. Like at least in New York City, everything is nearby. Mm -hmm. You can take a train to anywhere and be there within a minute, within few minutes. Yeah. The other biggest cultural shock I would say was that healthcare. Mm. I mean. I didn't know that it was that expensive un until I had right. to use my insurance. Mm. In India, you don't need, I mean, it's okay even if you don't have yeah. an insurance. So over here, you if you can't survive with, if know. you don't have yeah. it. So yeah, uh, that was one of the things. The other thing that I did notice, not initially when I got here, but after I started working as a GA, mm -hmm. was that the difference in, you know, the treatment you get at mm -hmm. your workplace. Right. Like over here, they even though I was a, I was just a student, mm. I wasn't treated as one. I was also treated as a colleague, right. and was also like my employer or my manager or mm -hmm. supervisor mm -hmm. or the professor was also accommodating of my time as well, right. which is a big deal. Yeah, yeah, which is a big deal and yeah. a huge, you know, contrast if you compare it to mm -hmm. India. Mm -hmm. So I think that was good. Yeah. Other thing was that people over here, they will tell you, hey, how are you? They yeah. don't expect an answer. Yeah, yeah. They just, hey, how are it's you? It's just That's like it. small talk. <laughs> yeah, small yeah. talk. Yeah. How's the weather? I'm not very good at small talk. <laughs> <laughs> I got used to small talk. Now even I uh, reach out to people that, you know, hey, watch out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I need to learn that. Yeah. What about you? What were your cultural shocks? Oh, my cultural shocks that... Uh, I was not used to holding doors for oh. other people to, you know, <laughs> other person yeah. to like pass away. True. But uh, yeah, I think, but now I'm so used to it that I even open the doors for like, and I keep the door open for other exactly. person for 10 seconds or more that even if I see that person is coming from far off yeah. place. So I think that was one of my cultural shocks. And the other cultural shock um, I faced was being on time. 
yes. being on time if you if you reach your lecture or if you reach your class at 9 o'clock so the professor will say that you know oh you are late yeah i'm i have reached at 9 the class starts at 9 no. you have yeah, to reach exactly. before 9 even the professor yeah. reaches like 10 minutes early yeah yeah so yeah so but yeah that's a good thing actually you have to be punctual if you are pursuing your masters degree and that is the one thing that uh, it's a small thing but it matters a lot for a lot of people a lot of professors a lot of um people who are working yeah. especially in the corporates so and i think it's yeah. important for a fast paced city like this exactly every everyone, minute counts yeah every minute yeah. counts and everyone has like so much plan for their day I know, that I yeah, know. can't afford to waste their time so tell me something about your likes and your dislikes about new york in general um something that i really like about new york is the fact that like i mentioned earlier it truly is the land of opportunities mm-hmm. and i have been lucky enough to be able to take advantage of that and still taking advantage of that <laughs> the other thing i find really good is that there's always something to do like right even if you are at home you want to stay at home you back of the mind you will still be thinking oh this event is going to happen today mm-hmm. it's free i yeah. should go yeah so there's always something to do you're never bored and the diversity over here you find every single cuisine you find every single type of person mm. so like doesn't matter what kind of a person you are you're going to fit in you're going to find right. your tribe sort of like that mm. so that's something i really enjoy i like the connectivity of the public transportation not the state of the public transportation it's very dirty <laughs> that's a dislike yeah. but i usually like the connectivity and initially i would enjoy getting on new york subways right because i had to use my mind yeah. to not get on the you know wrong mm-hmm. train because i have done that yeah and so i really used to enjoy mm. uh, you know just finding where i should get on yeah to reach my destination and you just have to use your brain so And it's like a more, mind puzzle one more like i would mention from your end is the coffee yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's okay i mean i just order a frappuccino so <laughs> <laughs> if i talk about dislikes i don't think i've had any dislikes until now except for the part that it's a little bit the weather is for example extreme yeah extreme yeah, yeah. if it's sunny today Yeah. next the next it minute tomorrow. it might the next minute i would say not yeah. even the day exactly <laughs> yeah but so far i don't think there are any dislikes i mean mm-hmm. i'm not a true new yorker yet so yeah. that's why maybe i don't have any dislikes i'm still very much a tourist mm-hmm. yeah just experiencing everything so awesome so it's been almost a year since you have been here and uh, so do you miss home do you yes. <laughs> do you feel homesick and uh, tell me something about your experience dealing with homesickness if you have had yeah i mean who doesn't it's it's mm. very natural to you know miss home when you're so yeah. far away from your close ones and friends and mm-hmm. families and everyone so i do feel homesick i mean i at least once uh, in two weeks mm-hmm. i just cry myself to sleep yeah. because i'm missing home so much but you have to just try and keep in touch but mm-hmm. even uh like despite of the time difference in time zones and everything what i do for example is that to stay connected with my family for, for, with my mom for mm-hmm. example me and my mom every morning and evening mm. we work out on video call for like 30 35 wow. minutes wow <laughs> so yeah that is something i do and uh because of that i feel more you know connected yeah. and i don't feel like oh i'm missing out on something right In fact I feel like my relationship with my friends and families mm-hmm. family has you know become more much much better, better yeah. after coming here like because you understand the yeah. importance the bond gets stronger the bond yeah. gets stronger yeah so and with family it's easier i think mm-hmm. because they are family yeah. but with friends it gets a little bit difficult because mm-hmm. even they have a very busy life right and this because of the time zones and everything it gets even more difficult mm-hmm. but i have been lucky enough to have friends who do keep in touch i have a mm. best friend who's also away from home yeah. in london okay. wow. so 
we we plan out you know like study dates mm-hmm. and like coffee dates we will we both yeah. will just go to a coffee place mm-hmm. in our own cities yeah. and just set up a facetime and have coffees or just read a book while staying on facetime so all right the little things count i guess yeah i think it's important to stay in touch stay yeah. connected even if it's just a message exactly that also means a lot that oh this this person is alive and he, yeah. he or she is doing good <laughs> that that uh, really counts and uh, to keep them updated i think yeah yeah keep them updated keep talking even if it's just for like 2 minutes 3 minutes you yeah. just have to like you know see their faces they are, if they are exactly. doing good or something like that what about you you just went home right yeah so i it? i visited india a month back a month ago and okay. uh, yeah it was it was great to be um, at home eating uh, all my favorite uh, <laughs> <I'm> so jealous <laughs> yeah <laughs> all my favorite food items and uh, it's good to be around family yeah i had a good time in india but uh, yeah it was just warm it was just really? a little hot uh the temperature was soaring high but yeah, apart from that everything was like super super great i would say i have not eaten enough that i wanted to eat <laughs> in india enjoying all the street food and uh, i had a lot of home cooked food yeah that's my mom the is best. a good cook everyone's mom is a good cook exactly yeah so i enjoyed that a lot and yeah i came back yeah even if like knowing that this is going to end yeah. you can never have enough food i know i know i wanted to explore a lot of different places that i had listed down before even getting to yeah, india getting because there. you see a lot of reels on instagram exactly. they all the food bloggers that you have oh this is a new place in my area yeah. i want to try <laughs> this i want to try this so yeah so kelly we will end this podcast with my final question okay what advice would you have for uh, international students who are planning to visit us to pursue their dream uh, masters degree um the most important thing i would say is do your research mm. i cannot stress that enough do not rely on people mm. do not rely on other like outside agency is like consultants right i would strongly recommend that even if you are relying on consultants do your own research right it could be as minute as looking at your page i mean looking at your university on the google maps the mm-hmm. street view of yeah. your university yeah. it could be as minute as that but do your research mm. it's very important because i did that and i understand the importance mm mm-hmm. So I did not go to any consultants for yeah. my entire process for visa for applying to universities anything. So I understand how important it is the, because that I did my own research before coming here. I even looked up the station that I was going to you know go to take the train. Okay. I even looked at what it looks like, mm-hmm. how to get there using the Google Street yeah. View and everything. it that level of research mm-hmm. so that's something you really need to do if you want to come mm-hmm. here second i would say is that you did all this hard work to mm. get here so don't stop all that hard work after you come here the hard work doesn't right. stop the real work starts after you get here mm. so don't be like oh i finally reached here now yeah. i'm set relaxed no. yeah that's not true you need to like keep up that you know pace. passion yeah. that pace mm. that you had to come here that's yeah. something i like these two things mm-hmm. i really mm-hmm. emphasize and tell everyone that yeah. do not it's not very difficult mm-hmm. i mean people a f- few of my friends who are planning to come here they always ask me that um oh is it that how is it how is yeah. life over there mm. is it very difficult to live there and i feel like I'm the last person you should ask <laughs> because I'm enjoying my life here so if you want a negative response do not yeah, come here yeah but what I would say is that it's definitely not easy mm. but it's the process and it's the um worth that mm-hmm. counts at the end of every day at the end of a day um it all just makes sense and it yeah. all is very 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 much worth it I feel like coming here was like the best decision i made mm-hmm. um in my career or professional life or anything just academic life 
it was the best decision i could make for myself yeah and just because it's it seems like it's going to be very difficult or you're mm-hmm. scared it's it's not natural to feel that way it's normal but yeah. take that step yeah it's take okay. that leap take that leap yeah. <laughs> awesome all right kelly we will end this podcast it was a pleasure chatting yes. with you you too and i'll see you soon thank you so much for inviting me